Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. If you are new, my name is Dakota. I make a ton of content on this channel, and today is going to be a story time. So if you like story time videos, plus like makeup, get ready with me while I tell you a crazy story about my crazy ass life video, then you are at the right place at the right time. Ooh, I don't know what that was, sorry. <laughs> I um, hope you all had an amazing Christmas. This will be here until probably like February because I just love Christmas and I love celebrating it prolonged. If I'm weird and that makes me weird, whatever. I hope you all had an amazing Christmas. I hope you guys you got everything that you wanted and that you needed. If you have kids, hope your kids had a great Christmas. If you were alone for Christmas, that is okay, girl, because you ain't gonna be alone forever. And temporary storms make for a skilled sailor. Is that the quote? I don't even know. This video is going to be the start of my daycare series. Are we so happy? Are we so happy? Y'all have been begging me since I started YouTube to start the daycare series. And I kind of came to the realization, hold up, I need some water, girl. It's been, <laughs> it's been a day. I've kind of come to the realization as to why I have been so hesitant when it comes to the daycare series. And the reason why is because I believe that subconsciously, I'm afraid of failing at YouTube. Like, I don't know why. It's a weird ass thing. I'll put a timestamp here if y'all just want to hear the story and y'all can go ahead and go to it. But if you guys want to hear like a real life talk while I'm, you know, about to get ready or whatever, then stick around. But, you know, YouTube is something I've wanted to do forever. Like, if you asked me when I was younger, what I wanted to do career-wise, you would have heard me say anything with entertainment, like literally anything with entertainment, anything where I'm entertaining people, or I'm talking to people, or I'm teaching people, or like I'm telling stories, right? Um, and I have my dream job. I, I get to wake up every single day and I get to live my dream job. And I was having this talk with my therapist a couple days ago because I told her, I said, I have so much potential in my life just in my life in in general that like I, I i have so much freaking potential and i was telling her i was basically telling her along the lines of like you know i have so much potential and i know that i could be so much further ahead in my life but for some reason like i'm just not i was like i have an opportunity right now and i have you know a job that people would kill to have and they work so hard for it in order to be in the position that i am and I feel like I'm like taking it for granted, like not taking you guys for granted because I would never do that, but taking just like this opportunity for granted. And I feel like if I don't take advantage of it and start posting more and start, you know, just really getting into it on YouTube, I just feel like I'm going to lose it. And I was telling her that, but I was like, I don't know what it is because I know I'm worthy of success. I know I'm worthy of a good career, but it's like, why can I not like I don't know it's just super weird then why can't I do it type of thing right and I'm starting to realize that I think subconsciously I don't think that I'm worthy of success I think subconsciously I don't think I'm worthy of accomplishing my dreams and I don't know where that comes from I don't know where that mindset is because like I do believe in myself like don't get me wrong but maybe it's I don't I don't believe my maybe there's some like subconscious block when it comes to success and abundance and shit like that I have no idea I'll uncover that as I go through therapy more and I'll keep you guys updated but I believe subconsciously I'm afraid to fail at YouTube and so because of that I have this fear that I'm gonna fail at YouTube and then I'm gonna have to go back to a traditional nine-to-five job and I'm going to need this job and other jobs I talk about as references and if I burn these bridges I'm not gonna have these references to get a job I'm not gonna have any money I'm gonna fail my daughter's gonna starve like all of these like crazy intrusive thoughts kind of come into play and something that I'm realizing is that if I don't know, how should I say this? If me telling my truth burns bridges, I'll learn how to swim. I'll learn how to swim. Um, because this is me telling a story about an experience I've gone through, about things that I've gone through. And, you know, through these daycare series stories, some of them are going to be funny. Like, today's is going to be funny. It's going to be lighthearted. But some of them are going to be kind of serious. And I'm going to be touching on, like, labor laws being broken, um, you know, unfair treatment from employers and directors and, um, like, labor laws and um, underpayment of teachers. Like, I'm going to be talking about some serious subjects. And I know 
that some people that I used to work with or that I used to be managed under are going to see these and they're not going to be happy about it. And I just need to come to the conclusion that I don't care. Like, I don't care because y'all didn't care when I was going through the trenches at this job. Y'all didn't care when I was crying out for help. So why should I care about you being mad about me telling the truth? Like, you get what I'm saying? So anyway, before I start, make some disclaimers. I'm not telling the name of this daycare because it doesn't matter, but also because I do respect people and their privacy. And although um, certain stories in this are not going to be, <laughs> not going to paint people in the best light, um, that is not my problem. That is their problem because of the actions they pursued. I also am not perfect. I know that I've messed up, you know, at this job multiple times. I know that there's certain times where I probably should have been fired. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know that, but I'm being transparent. And I'm being vulnerable and I'm owning that and I'm admitting that, you know, it's called accountability. You should try it sometime. Um, so there's that. And then also too, I don't have any beef with any coworkers besides maybe like one, um, that I used to work with and no beef with any directors besides the last director that I had. Any other directors or assistant directors I've had, any directors or assistant directors I've had, we're cool, you're cool, everything's cool. The only person I really have any type of issues with is the last director I had because she was very condescending. She put me in a really bad position and she just didn't care about me. We're going to touch on her later on. Those are going to be later daycare series story times. I'm probably going to make about 10 videos um, about of stories I have from this daycare. Anyway, if you guys are interested in hearing the story about this group chat from freaking hell, some pretty little liars shit, we were trying to figure out who A was in this group chat that started up so much chaos so much commotion so much triumph at my job go ahead and get your wine get your snacks get your popcorn get a notepad get some water and stay hydrated because you stay hydrated and mind your business it really does clear up a lot of um unfulfillment in life so <laughs> go ahead and sit back relax and enjoy the story time time is going to take place when I was literally at first I was 19 so I worked this daycare from the time I was 19 to the time I was 25 so basically I'll give you a little bit of backstory of this daycare so I had just moved from New Jersey to Connecticut and I really needed a job and I kind of had decided that I was done working at daycares even though I didn't end up working out but whatever His reason being because I was just over it I really wanted to try something new I really didn't like want to work with kids anymore. Not that I didn't love working with kids. I just didn't love working with kids at a fucking daycare because you just don't get treated right. You're very underappreciated, very underpaid. There's a lot of drama because, you know, daycares are mainly girls. I think there was only like two guys that had ever worked at the daycare that I was employed at. Um, and girls are just a lot of freaking drama. If you've worked in an all-female setting, I think that you can agree. So I was just over it. So I very much so was looking for jobs when it came to like hosting or working in a restaurant. I really wanted to work in a tanning salon. So I was just out here in my little Honda Civic driving around all over Connecticut trying to find me a job. So I got a couple of interviews, but the main issue was number one, my age. Like I said, I was 19, so I was very, very young. Um, and number two, I wanted to go to school and it is damn near impossible to find a part-time job when you want to go to school. It's not impossible, but it's damn near impossible because people just want full-time workers. They don't want to have to worry about scheduling issues. And I totally understand that. But at the same time, it's like if I'm going to school to better my life and to better myself, you should support that. But anyway, also the second issue was my experience level. I've never worked at a tanning salon before. So they were like, mm, unfortunately, we're looking for somebody with more experience. I never worked at a restaurant before. So everyone's like, mm, in order to be a host, you kind of have to have experience. I literally was just getting shut down left to right. I even was trying to work at this like piercing place in the mall. And everybody was just like, no, girl, like you have no experience. You should not even be here right now. Like, go back to your roots, right? So a month had gone by and I still did not have a job and my savings was slowly but surely very much so dwindling down. I had saved some money from my last job in New Jersey 
and girl i was making like eight dollars an hour at that job so to be completely honest i didn't have a lot of savings to begin with but i worked with what i had and saved what i could it was getting down to the point where i was like on my last like a hundred dollars i'm literally not even kidding and i really just needed something quick and something fast so my dad's girlfriend at the time one day comes to my house and she's just visiting and she's like hey i have this friend who is the director of a daycare that is literally eight minutes from your house. They have benefits there and it's something for now. Like you should just try it. You should go for the interview. I can get you an interview there. Worst comes to worst is you don't like it and you end up just finding a different job. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, like sure, that would be great. So basically, long story short, I end up getting an interview at this daycare. So I go for the interview and it's very much so different than the daycare I used to work at. I kind of worked at like an after school program um in New Jersey and this was like a full time daycare and they had anywhere from six weeks of infants to school agers so they had like infants one year olds two year olds three year olds four year olds anywhere from like 10 years old so it was like a plethora of ages there and I was not used to that but I was used to working with older kids now when I went to the daycare they were looking for a toddler teacher and at this time I was not a parent yet okay Aubrey was not even a thought I was 19 years old um and that was that but I did want to be a teacher and I did know that I would probably have to work with kids that were younger and that I needed to gain experience so I thought it'd be a great opportunity I go in and they're basically just asking me basic interview questions like you know what was your experience where did you last work at how long you know what do you think you could bring to the daycare what are your weaknesses what are your strengths and they basically ended up liking me and told me they wanted me to do an in-classroom interview so that same day I ended up going into the classroom and basically I just helped the head teacher in there with whatever she needed when it came to the kids and then after like 30 minutes they came and grabbed me told me you know they would call me let me know and that teacher in there would basically tell them like oh she was good or she sucked basically and about a week later I hear back and that I am hired and at first I thought that I had hit the bank because at first girl like I said I was making I think 725 or eight dollars at my old after school program they hired me at 1025 when I tell you I thought that I was rolling in the money girl I thought I was rolling in the money I was like oh my god I'm making ten dollars an hour this is so great this job has benefits look at me on my ground shit I'm be working 40 hours a week like none of my friends like had like jobs they literally just like did side hustles here and there I did like part-time jobs but like they were out partying they were out doing this and that they did not have full-time jobs they didn't have any of that stuff so for me I was like look at me I'm grown like <laughs> I'm on my ground shit right um ciao anyway so not knowing that I was literally getting gypped because they hired this girl a month later and me and her ended up becoming friends and they hired her at like $12 and she had no experience in daycare I had so much experience but anyway I end up getting hired at this job and I go and I do my fingerprints, I get my like tuberculosis test, I get my physical, all this shit that you basically got to do before that you are hired somewhere and I start my first day. Now let me just say, the story that I'm about to tell takes place about a year after I started at this daycare. So that's where we're going to begin, but let me just say this. In the course of my five years, five, six years at this daycare, I had three managers or directors, but we're just going to say managers, three, at a Foot Locker or at a Panera or a Wendy's. That is pretty typical. People get moved. People don't like the job. Other people get promoted. People get demoted. At a daycare, it is not normal to have three different directors in your first three years. Basically, the reason why we had all these different directors is because our daycare was ranked the lowest out of all the other daycares. So this daycare, which we have to give it a name, we're going to call it, we're going to call it Apple Pear. So we're going to call the daycare Apple Pear. So this Apple Pear was in my state, Connecticut, but they had Apple Pears all over the country. I'm not talking about states. They have one in freaking China, girl. Like they are everywhere. So out of, in our regional area, so Connecticut, so there was one in basically every single town. So say there's like 12 towns, like 12 um, apple pears in Connecticut, we were ranked one of the lowest, okay? And because of that, we always had the regional director of like all of this, of the um, apple pears 
in Connecticut come in, always tell us basically that we weren't shit, that we need to step our crap up, we need to do better, X, Y, and Z. And so every time that basically she saw we weren't doing good, she would kind of look at the manager and be like, okay, yeah, you got to go. So that's kind of what happened with my first one is that basically she realized, you know, the regional manager kind of came in and looked at our district manager and was just kind of like, mm, I don't know, I just feel like, you know, maybe this isn't the right position for you. Maybe we need to find somebody new and basically gave her the option of either being let go or she could leave on her own so that's basically what happened so my first director basically ends up leaving and we get a second director now this is a year I have been working there okay so I had already gotten pregnant um, taking my maternity leave and came back. Let me say that my first year working there was honestly one of the best years of my whole entire life. You know when you're working at a certain place that if you have a certain like crew or a certain um like staff that you kind of become like a little bit of like a family and that's definitely what happened like we definitely didn't like the job we definitely knew that it kind of sucked and this and that but like we loved each other like we loved each other as staff and we were a very tight close-knit family but when I had gone on maternity leave for three months and came back I swear to god everything changed so many people left or people ended up like it was basically impossible to get fired at this daycare i worked there for five six years i think i only saw two people get fired and it was for dumb reasons but it was basically impossible to get fired you could literally come into the classroom and do the most outlandish crazy things and get reported for it but you would never get fired like it was literally insane so people just like took advantage all the time because they knew that they weren't gonna get fired and the reason that they weren't gonna get fired is because we were extremely understaffed like imagine like if you work in like a kitchen like you're understaffed and like everything is crazy and it's a hectic day same thing at the freaking daycare it was crazy and we were getting so many enrollments but we weren't getting any new staff so it was just nuts I came back a lot of the original girls had um, some of them had like just left because they kind of got tired of like the treatment there um, and then others moved to other um, apple pears like around you know the region or others just were in different classrooms Girl, it was basically a whole new place and I had to get acclimated and adjusted to it. A few months after I came back, like I said, my first manager ended up leaving and we got a second one. Now, when this second manager came in, and let me just say, I don't have any issues with her. I don't have any beef with her, but I will say, and listen, like if she's ever watching this, I have so much respect for you. I genuinely did like you, like, you know, no, no hard feelings, but she brought so much drama to this workplace so much drama okay and this is kind of where our story is going to begin and we are going to take off so when i came back to this apple pear i was in the toddler classroom but which toddler classroom was i in no i was floating okay so i had a classroom when i left i was a head teacher of a classroom and then when i came back they were kind of like you know we can't hold your classroom for you you kind of have to take whatever position is available which is totally understandable it sucks but it's understandable so i was floating but i was mainly floating between the infant room and toddler room so i would do lunch breaks or if anybody needed anything i would kind of like come in there and take care of that and those were basically my duties and then it got to a point where i started going to school and I was only working 12 30 to 6 30 so I go to school from like 7 a.m. to like 12 and then I'd work 12 30 to 6 30 so also it just made more sense to me for me to float for that reason because I wasn't there full-time technically I was working 30 hours but technically that wasn't full-time to them so when I started working in the infant classroom, we ended up getting a new teacher. And we also ended up getting like a bunch of girls that ended up all kind of forming this like group. So we're gonna need names for everybody. So we are going to call, we're gonna use Pretty Little Liar names. So there's about, how many girls are in this story? Let's see. There's about five girls, okay, when it comes to this group chat, that were in this group chat, not including myself. But they're not all relevant to the story, but we are gonna give them all names. So we're gonna do Emily. Allison, um, Emily, Allison, Hannah, Spencer, and Aria. Okay, so we're just gonna do like a fucking pretty little liars theme, okay? So I had been 
really close with Aria. Um, me and Aria actually became pretty good friends, you know, before I even got pregnant. She was the girl that got hired after me that got paid more than me, which is why I found out and I was like, bitch, what? Me and Spencer were really close too. She ended up like falling in love with my daughter and loved her so freaking much. Um, and she would help me out. She'd bring me in like hand-me-downs from her kids, give me advice on bottles and stuff like that. So Aria and Spencer, I was really close with. And Emily, I was actually um, like pretty cool with too. Allison. Allison got there, I want to say like four months after I had started. Allison came in and she directly started to be an infant teacher. And Allison was definitely like a slow to warm up type of person like you didn't know if she liked you or not it was like i don't know i think that that girl may hate me or she may love me but like i'm not really sure she definitely was like super standoffish like slow to warm up i have a way of just like cracking people open like i don't know what it is but i have a way of making people like kind of just like open up around me and be like funny and lighthearted and fun like she definitely was like more serious but it wasn't because she was like a bitch or anything it was just because she was like super like slow to warm up but if you didn't understand like basic human psychology you're probably like oh my god this girl is like the biggest bitch in the world but she really was not it was just because of like that was just her personality and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that so basically time goes on and I end up getting paired in the infant room so what would happen was is after school I would come in and I would go straight to the um, infant room and at the time Allison was in there with another teacher that teacher ended up um, quitting and getting another job and she left so basically there was like one worker that would be there with her from like 8 a.m. to like 12 and then I would come in from 12 to 6 30 and we would be together and we would work together so because I was in there so often me and Allison ended up developing like a pretty cool bond like we opened after a while bitch it took like months okay but we started like opening up to each other she would open up to me about you know her kids and um her kid's father and like the man that she was with and things like that and like I would open up to her about like my relationship stuff I genuinely ended up really liking Allison I just thought that she was really really cool now at this time my friend who was what did i name her aria my friend aria like i said the one that came in after me and ended up getting like more pay than me she ended up going to a different daycare so at first it was just me and all the girls there all right guys okay so aria is my friend okay that's the one that i ha was friends with when i started to work there allison was my co-teacher and the other girls are spencer emily um hannah and then it's gonna be Paige. okay so aria i was super close with allison i was getting close with spencer i was close with that's the one that i still like love my daughter okay emily emily i was actually really really close with too like she ended up coming to like all of my baby showers um every like birthday that i had she was there like we became really really close so i was really close with aria and i was really close with emily and then like allison i was getting close with and spencer i was like you know pretty close with too but when it came to hannah and Paige, we really weren't like i wouldn't say close like we were like okay but we weren't like the absolute most like close in the whole entire world but we were like cool right so anyway time goes on and aria my friend ends up actually leaving that daycare and coming back to apple pear so she comes back you know i'm kind of like giving her the lay of the land because even she said like wow like there's like basically a whole new staff there because there was like from when we first when we both kind of like started together when we first had both started compared to now there was like a whole new staff bitch okay and everybody knows when you have a new staff you kind of have to get acclimated i'm not gonna lie i really miss like the old staff who worked there there were some girls who were still there that were from the old staff but like i'm talking like the og crew of freaking apple pear okay i missed so damn much but is what it is right so we all just basically started to get adjusted to each other and i'm not gonna lie for a couple of months the workplace was very enjoyable now like i said this director had just started okay and we're just gonna call her there's too many names in this so we're just gonna call her director number two okay so director number two comes in and she seems very nice at first like she basically comes in she has an interview with all of us like personally okay she brings us in and she's like getting to know us she gives us a sheet of paper where we put our birthdays where we put what we like you know for candy and what we like for gift cards what's our favorite restaurant things like that and so i'm like oh my god like no other director has gotten to know us this way or has cared to know us and we're thinking that 
you know, she's going to bring a lot of like positive change to the company. And we all kind of like breathe a freaking sigh of relief. And we're like, oh my God, finally, like somebody that comes in and cares, right? And my assistant director, we all love. Like she was great. Still to this day, love her. She has done so many references for me. She was absolutely amazing, okay? So she comes in and right off the bat, we notice one of the red flags is she asks us what we didn't like about director number one who had just left and she was replacing. And me at first i didn't see that as too much of a red flag the one who saw was a red flag was allison when she came in she's like i don't like how that director in there is trying to ask us what we didn't like about our past director because that's weird like why is she so like why does she care so much and i was like oh well maybe you know she's just trying to find out what we didn't like about her because she doesn't want to repeat those same mistakes and she's like yeah but she could do all of that without talking bad about her and I was like what do you mean and she was like yeah she was like talking bad about her to me basically saying you know that she left that place like in a mess and that you know now she has to clean up all this mess and that she didn't know what she was doing and like talking about the grounds of like termination and like why she got fired and stuff like that and I was like oh my god no like that's crazy she wasn't doing all that with me but I was like I believe you but like damn like I don't know and she said she's like I don't know what it is about that girl but like if I was all of y'all I would be careful like I would be on alert at all times because I don't trust her now me being me I wanted to give director number two benefit of the doubt because I was like you know what maybe she just doesn't know social cues like maybe she just doesn't know that that's not what you do when you first start a job or I don't know and she seemed really really nice like at first if you had like an appointment you had to like take a day off for it or like get your kids to an appointment she would try like super duper hard to like get you accommodated or like if there was ever an issue with like one of the parents she'd be like $50 off for this week of tuition like things like that right so at first we thought that she was really really cool now like I said, the assistant director at the time that was there, everybody loved her so much. She was amazing. She ended up leaving because her and director number two kind of had some like issues. Like basically they were both in the same office, but director number two pushed the assistant director out. And she was like, no, like this is my office. You can go sit out there basically. And the assistant director was like, I've been here for like literally like three years assistant directing and you're gonna kick me out of my office and make me go make a little like makeshift desk in the lobby where everybody and their mother is like when you're out having a lobby of like a daycare everybody is in it the parents are in it the staff is in it the kids are in it she's like how am I gonna make phone calls to like accounts payable or people about their tuition or like personal stuff in the lobby and I'm talking about like codes and money and like things that people can't hear like how am I gonna do that so she basically was like I'm freaking over it like I love you guys and I'm sorry but she basically was telling all the staff that she was looking for employment elsewhere because she was like I just can't deal with director number two anymore like I just feel like she has like she wants me to leave basically because why else would she be treating me like this so she basically felt as if she was getting like pushed out and she was really really good at her job the assistant director was so good at her job and she knew that all she had to do was go on like an interview and she would get hired and she was a fucking hard worker she had a kid and she was not only working full time at the daycare, but had a bartending job on top of it and then had another job too. This girl had like three jobs and was a single mom, okay? Like she was freaking killing it. But she's like, I'm not going to stay here if my work is not being appreciated. And when I say she was the glue to Apple Pear, she was the glue. So when she left, bitch, that's when all hell literally broke loose. So over time... It kind of starts getting pretty miserable to work at the daycare. Nobody's happy. Everybody's annoyed. It gets to a point where, like, we're so overstaffed that one time Aria, my friend Aria, was so sick. She was literally so sick. She was, like, freaking throwing up, had, like, a 104 fever, and she went to go call out, and my director was like, No, you have to come in. Like, I'm sorry, but we're so understaffed today. Like, you have to come in. And she's like... I'm literally sick over my toilet, hunched over with an 104 degree fever and you're telling me I have to come in. And she's like, yeah, not even like, oh, like we'll try to get you the day off or like we'll try to like get you sent home like a little bit early or anything like that. Like, no, it was like, girl, you have to come in. And I will say at this daycare, they totally played favorites. And at first, I want to say for like my first, like up until like six months before I left this daycare, I was definitely a favorite. And I'm not going to sit here and like gloat about that or anything like that. But 
I was a favorite because I did my job very well. I did my job very well. I was voted employee of the month multiple, multiple times. And all the parents loved me. I never had any issues. And I literally did my job so well. But um, my friend Aria did not. So she basically was like, I don't understand. Like if it was you that was calling out, she probably would have let you. But she's just not doing it because it's me. And I'm like, girl, I don't know. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I like I know. But it's like, I don't. there's nothing I could literally do. So basically, she ended up having to come in. And it was like, it was just getting really bad. And it was like that a lot. Lot. like multiple people would get sick and multiple people would get told like no you have to come in because like we're so understaffed and um because we were so understaffed like sometimes people like wouldn't get like lunch breaks and stuff like that calling for a bathroom break because there's no bathrooms in the classrooms you have to like leave the classroom and go out into the bathroom but you can't just leave you have a classroom full of kids so if there's two teachers and eight kids two teachers have to be in the room. If there's four kids, only one has to be in the room. So if you have like a full classroom, you can't just leave and go to the bathroom because sometimes like, say you had six kids and like the other um, room across from you had room for them, you could like transfer them for like two minutes while you go to the bathroom and then come grab them and go to your room. But it was like very rare that happened. So we had to like call for bathroom breaks and half the time nobody could come because like the director or assistant director was like in the classroom. Like it was just really, really bad. So what ends up basically happening is after the assistant director leaves, everything just kind of like goes to crap. Also, I will say though, I have to give grace and compassion to director number two because directing and managing a daycare with no assistant director is like having a doctor's office with no admin like no like front desk person receptionist it's like people don't understand how much like an assistant director or like admin or like receptionist person really does add value you know to the workplace and people don't understand that until they're gone so everybody was like super unhappy so because everybody was super unhappy we thought let's make a group chat oh, no. No, 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 no. Okay, let's make a group chat that's going to basically get us through the day. That way we can do our job, but we can like text each other and talk shit and laugh and just have fun throughout the day. So this group chat at first, at first was me, Spencer, Emily, Allison, and Paige, okay? So it was the five of us. And basically, because I was in the infant room with Allison and because, um, you know, Paige and Spencer were like really close with Allison, they would come in and they would talk to us like on their lunch breaks and stuff or they would like find excuses to come in and hang out with us. So because we, all the four of us were pretty close, we decided to make our group chat. And then my friend, um, Emily, um, she only worked there for like three hours a day, but she was like a floater and she would come in and help us at the end of the day We ended up becoming super close with her. So we added her so it was the five of us and at first this group chat I swear to god was like my freaking saving grace We would not only talk during the day at work and it would get us through work But we would talk outside of work on the weekends after work before work Like we literally like we would text and be like hey does anybody want Duncan like it was such a fun group chat and i'm such a firm believer and only have about five people five to six people in a group chat anything more than that gets chaotic drama happens and it's just too many conflicting personalities that is where we fucked up i fucked up because one day i was talking to my friend aria aria was not in the group chat aria was not in the group chat because aria was my friend but aria had a a personality where um, it, it was an acquired taste, right? So it's either like you loved her or you just didn't. And I liked her and she was like a pretty good friend, but like to other people, she kind of came off as like just too much or just too like straightforward or just, just like too much, right? So she was not in the group chat, but one day I was talking out loud and I said something to her. I think we were like in my classroom and I was like something, something, something. Oh, and then, then the group chat and I started laughing about it. And she was like, what group chat? And I was like, oh, me and the other girls, we have a group chat. And she's like, and I'm not in it. And I was like, oh, well, like, you know, I'll like, I'll see if maybe you can get added in it. I couldn't add anybody in it because at the time I had an Android. Stop it. Get some help. It was a struggle, girl. Okay, I did not have an iPhone. I had a freaking Android. So the person who made the group chat, which I want to say, Spencer, she had to add her in. So I go to Spencer and I basically give her my story and I'm like, do you get Aria in? Like, I promise you it's going to be a good addition. She's not going to start no problems, whatever, whatever. And Spencer's like, uh, I don't really know. Like, sometimes her personality pisses me off. I don't really know. And I was like, come on, let's just add her. It'll be fine. And she's like, fine. So once I get the stamp of approval from Spencer, I tell Aria, you're in. So Aria gets in the group chat and I'm not going to lie, for the past like two months, this group chat 
was an amazing group chat and I was so happy with it so excited with it and wow I ended up finishing my makeup really fast because I didn't do eyeshadow but that's okay I still have some other things I could do so it was an amazing group chat and it was just so much fun and we would just honestly I'm not gonna lie it was pretty immature but we would just talk shit we would talk shit or we would talk about like makeup or we would talk about boys but we mainly would talk shit about director number two I'm not gonna lie we did because we were getting fed up because like I said just so much chaotic shit was going on and we just started to get freaking annoyed with it so our placed event was the group chat and at first this group chat was not meant for like talking shit about her it only ended up happening that way because we all eventually ended up like having the same feelings about her so like at first a couple of us were like oh no like director number two is great don't say that about her like she's so nice and then a couple weeks later like she would do something like personal to one of us and then you'd be like nah fuck her like forget director number two like i'm in with you guys like we all basically just started to feel the same exact way about her and again this is not to say anything bad about her it's just at the time like I said, she was going through a lot because she was running the place by herself. They were having a hard time hiring help. So she was running the place, whole entire place by herself, you guys. Like working crazy hours, doing everything alone. So she had a lot on her plate and I understand that. But it doesn't excuse some of the stuff that freaking happened, okay? So basically time goes on and we're having fun in our little group chat. And then somebody, I don't know who it was. Oh, it was Aria. It was Aria. Aria was like, oh my God, why don't we add Hannah into the group chat? Let me guys, let me give you guys a little backstory on Hannah, okay? I don't like Hannah to this day because of what she did, but we're going to get into that later. Hannah was a new hire. Hannah came in, she was a new hire, and at first I really liked her. She was super freaking cool, super freaking nice, and she was like witty, like just, just hilarious, and I really, really liked her. And at first she was only part-time because she was going to school. After she went to school, she ended up becoming full-time and she ended up becoming the chef at this daycare because we had like a kitchen and we offered, you know, like breakfast, lunch, and snacks. And our chef Rob, which I miss him to this day, he was so cool. Our chef Rob ended up leaving um, because of director number two, because he was so fed up with her. Like she would never order the food on time. She would give him um, like attitude if he had to like, he didn't want to come to the staff meetings and understandably so because at the fucking staff meetings, why does the chef have to be there? This is about the teachers. And she would make him come. And our first director didn't make him come because she was like, no, like, why are you going to come? Like, you're the chef. Like, this has nothing to do with you. Like, classroom policy and potty training has nothing to do with you. Um, so she would make him come to the meetings. And also, she would start sticking him in a fucking classroom. And he was like, I'm not a teacher. I have no credentials to be here. I'm literally here to cook and to go home. These are my hours. She would, like, make him stay late. So he was like, no, like, I'm done with her. I'm leaving. I'm going to another um, job job so he ended up leaving too so anyway um when hannah ended up being done with school the director number two was like i'm gonna stick you downstairs and i'm gonna have you be um the chef because like we just don't have anybody to do it and you're my only option and she didn't want to do it but she was just like okay whatever but keep in mind she was trying to get back into a classroom and sometimes when you want something you'll throw your friends under the bus because you think that oh if you kiss ass to the director and you're under her ass and you you know reveal to her information or you you know snitch on other people that that director is going to give you special privileges but really what ends up happening is you're just a snitch and you end up losing all your friends over time i started noticing that she was a little bit of like a snitch like she would kind of like snitch on people i would leave and like clock out for the day and i would see her in the director's office with the fucking door closed and we all know what that means y'all are talking shit so i kept my eyes on her and i was like i don't trust her so i stopped telling her things but i did really enjoy her company in the classroom she was great with the kids. She was so funny. Um, and when she wasn't cooking, she would come and like help out in the room and things like that. So over time, basically, Arya is like, can we please add Hannah in the group chat? And I at first was like, I don't think it's a good idea. We have too many people. We also need to stop telling people about the group chat. The whole point of having a group chat is to keep it private so people don't find out, especially the director. And nobody was understanding the assignment. Over time, we ended up adding Hannah into the group chat. Now, let me just tell you guys where all this freaking falls apart, okay? And there was this one girl at our job, okay? And we're just gonna give her the name of Kay. So Kay came in and you know that type of girl where like you look at her and you she comes across as like so innocent and so young and so just like you would never think that like 
her personality on her um, Instagram would like be a certain way. This is the way it was with Kay. So I ended up adding Kay on Instagram, but she was private and she ended up accepting me. When I tell you this girl lived a Hannah Montana double life at work, she would just like wear this cute little sock bun and wear like little ballerina flats and just like go around in the hallways. But on the weekends, this girl was like twerking in every club in New Haven, hanging out with like, she had so many people going to college dorm room parties. Like she just was the complete opposite. Like her Instagram personality did not match her work personality and I loved that for her but one day I ended up seeing that she was gay and that's not to say anything bad I'm a huge supporter of the LBGTQ community but I saw she had a girlfriend and I was like oh my god like that good for her like that's so cool but like, I never imagined that she would be gay and that's like people are gonna hear that and say it the wrong way but like I just didn't expect for her to be gay like I, I didn't at all so I basically texted the group chat and I was like oh my god did you guys know that Kay like has a girlfriend I was like oh my god like they're actually really cute like that's like so good for her but like I just I didn't I didn't think I sh that you um you had you you what you could you do oh, no like i just didn't expect it out of her you know and so we're talking in the group chat and everyone is kind of writing back and they're like oh my god no way like she won't accept my request on instagram but they were like i heard that like her instagram personality versus her work personality are so different and i was like girl no like it really is tell me why spencer like i said the one that like loves my daughter you know me and her kind of got super close over time spencer writes back and she starts giving me attitude and she's like why do you even care why are you even talking about the fact that she has a girlfriend like what do you have a problem with that or something and she's like people truly need to stop talking about other people's business and i'm like i was shook i was like where is this coming from like you would have thought that this girl heard that I like talked about her or said something about her and then started being a bitch towards me. I was like, and so I wrote back and I'm like, um, where is this coming from? I was like, what the fuck? And I literally, cause like at this point in my life, I didn't care anymore about confrontation. I used to be the type of girl where I would run for confrontation, but now, no, if you want the smoke, we can, we can go all day. So I was like, what the fuck is your problem? Are you okay? And so me and Spencer started going back and forth in the group chat. Emily, who is like the little mediator there, is like, guys, please stop. Come on, like, let's just all get along. <laughs> like, why is everybody fighting? Some people are just staying out of it and they're like, nah, like y'all two handle that. Other people are kind of chiming in. It's just like a whole entire mess. So me and Spencer start going back and forth and we're just like doing our low blows and we're just like saying our piece. I'm like, what? Like you had me fucked up. Like what the hell? Like it just, you guys, it came out of nowhere. There was no conversation up until then that led up to that point where she said that to me it was just like straight animosity off the bat and then she was making me feel bad because I'm like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with her being gay like anybody who knows me knows I'm like a firm supporter of anybody who wants to love who they love like I literally preach about it but like don't make me feel bad about me just being surprised like you know what I'm saying like I just don't understand like it was just so weird so anyway I'm pissed that whole day and I'm in my classroom I'm doing my shit and one thing about me and Spencer is we didn't see each other too much during the day unless I was in Allison's classroom but there would be times where I would also go to the classroom across and I would help out over there and so there was a period of time where I was over there like a lot okay um so I was over there like quite a bit that week I actually think I was on a break from school if I'm not mistaken so I was over there quite a bit and so because of that I really wasn't seeing Spencer or Allison that much throughout the day because I was kind of in like my own little my own little classroom so I knew that at one point throughout that day I was going to see her but it wasn't going to be until like the very end of the work day so I was just sitting there and I was ready you know like when you're in the shower and you start like preparing arguments like in your head or like you start preparing like what you want to see say to like that one person that's what I was doing and I was freaking ready okay I was ready for all the smoke so she randomly comes in and she opens the door and she's like I was joking Dakota I was just kidding I don't know why you react like that it was literally just a joke and I was like girl you were not joking you guys know like your friends like you know your friends well enough to the point where if they're joking you know like the way they talk and the way they say things and their demeanor versus when they're not joking and they're dead serious and I was like Spencer 
girl I was like you were not joking like you were not kidding and she's like no 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 I swear like I swear up and down I was joking I was joking like blah 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 blah. like I, I wasn't being serious x y and z and I'm just like I just don't understand though like where did that like, that anger and animosity come from and you guys it was just like super weird because we didn't talk to each other that way so I, we didn't have that like friendship where you know when you guys are like joking and you start like kind of like making fun of each other or whatever like it wasn't that type of friendship like we were like very nice to each other we didn't have that type of friendship where you just like p talk shit and make jokes and like dark humor type we didn't have that so i was so confused and i'm just like girl where is all this coming from so anyway she swears up and down that it's a joke so we end up just like squashing it it is what it is everyone in the group chat is like are y'all okay and we're like yeah we're good it was a misunderstanding but i kept it in the back of my pocket pocket because i knew something was up so one day randomly allison ends up texting the group chat and she's like whoever's in charge of this group chat take me out right now take me out right now I don't want to be in this shit anymore take me out right now and I was so confused because we had actually been using that group chat less and less and less as the weeks were going by it's not like we were like blowing it up or talking in it constantly so I was hella confused and I'm like why does she not want to be in the group chat anymore like what is going on so she the only person that could take her out was um aria that's because when you have a um android in the group chat which was me um you can't take yourself out of the chat you have to have the, like the person who did it take you out or you have to start a new one so that's what ended up happening is we had to just start a complete new one and so she started a new one and i was just confused and i'm like why does Allison not want to be in the group chat anymore? But Allison wasn't the type of person where you could go ask her why she didn't want to be in the group chat anymore. Allison was the type of person where it's like, if you ask me why, I'm going to curse you out. So leave me alone. So I was just like, I'm just going to leave her alone. But I just noticed there was so much tension within all the girls. Like, I don't know, like super weird. It kind of felt as if like, Spencer, Paige, and Allison kind of like formed an alliance and were like over there. And then it was like me and Aria over here. Hannah just like doing her own thing. And then Emily would just kind of like come in at the end of the day. So it kind of felt like the group was like splitting and we were like forming into like little cliques almost. Like it was so weird. It was like so high school. Like on the days where I would work with Allison, I would notice that like Spencer would come in or like Paige would come in and they would like only talk to her. Or they'd be like, oh, you know, I'm gonna get lunch today. Do you want anything? But they wouldn't like ask me. Like, I don't know. It was like super weird. It went from like everyone being all inclusive. Like, oh, who wants Dunkin' or who wants Starbucks or who wants this or that? So like only being like cliques and like alliances formed. So I'm like, something is fishy something is going on and something stinks i don't know what it is turns out i guess aria and allison had like a really big falling out because aria had been helping out allison in her classroom so i used to float and be in there a lot with allison but then they kind of like i said moved me across the other hall because it was like i was in like a school break or something and they needed help in that classroom so during this time aria was in the classroom with allison a lot and i guess they kind of became like co-teachers but it wasn't said if aria was like a officially gonna stay in that classroom or not it was more so like you're kind of just here now nothing was set in stone at this daycare it was so disorganized so basically what ended up happening was aria and allison had like a huge falling out because apparently aria like wasn't really like being the best with the kids like she would kind of like talk to them like sideways and they were like infants so it's like why are you talking to them sideways um and i guess Aria felt like Allison wasn't like pulling her weight in the classroom and Allison felt like Aria was like mean to the kids so they would like just like go through these like weird periods of time where they like wouldn't talk to each other the whole entire day and it's like you kind of have to talk to each other because you're taking care of eight kids and you have to say like oh this one needs a bottle or like if you go on a lunch break oh you know don't feel don't feed little Tommy because I just fed him but he does need to be put down for a nap it's like they were just communicating through like a whiteboard like in the front of the classroom and they would like write notes to each other but they wouldn't talk and like it was just super weird and I guess it got to a point where like Allison was just like done with Aria and she wanted nothing to do with her so she was like take me out of this group chat right now so that happened and it was just a very awkward dynamic but apparently I guess Allison felt because me and Aria were kind of like closer she felt like if she had beef with Aria or didn't like Aria that she not that she didn't like me or had beef with me, but that she she couldn't be as close to me because of that, because she felt like it was just weird, which I totally understand. 
but then me and Allison kind of started like having this like little wedge and it was it was just weird I don't know I, I it was I, I can't explain it to this day it was just weird ass energy so there's like a huge divide within the group and it becomes very apparent over time like certain people aren't talking to other people certain people are being like super petty like if Allison had to like pass a kid like to Aria or if Allison had to do something with Aria she would kind of just like plop the kid down and like walk out of the classroom like wouldn't say anything like oh here's little Susie here's her paper she just got changed she just would like not say anything and then she kind of started like acting weird towards me like she would do the same thing to me too she would like come and like bring me a kid because she had to go home and she um needed to pass like her kids over to me she would come and like pass them and just like give me their stuff and then just like leave the room and like not say anything and it's like um okay well have a good night to you too bitch like what the fuck so like <laughs> <laughs> not bitch you know what I mean I have no issue with these girls this day I'm just saying how I felt during the time present day I love all of them everything is good <laughs> but it's just funny to reflect back on and talk about so basically so one day actor number two ends up pulling me and pulling um another teacher into the office and she basically sits us down and it, the teacher had nothing to do with the group chat but she basically was just like in the mix a little bit because she would help out in our classrooms from now and then so she brings us into the office and she's like what's going on I see that there's like a divide between all the girls like what's going on like you guys are not slick I see that you guys aren't talking to each other I see this and that blah 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 what's happening so basically I say I said I don't know what's happening I honestly could not tell you but I all I said was I just feel like this daycare is very clicky and it feels very high school and I said I'm personally just over it like I'm not here anymore to make friends I'm just here to make money and go home because I was like people here are just weird like I don't understand it and so then the teacher next to me kind of starts chiming in and she's like yeah and she's not even a part of the group chat guys and she's like yeah I kind of see that too like I agree with Dakota it just feels like kind of clicky as we're having this conversation tell me how Allison is walking out because she's leaving for the night and she has like her trash in her hands to go bring to the the dumpster in the back and she walks by and she sees us in the office because the office has like glass doors glass windows everything and let me just say director number two was very shady when doing this because me and the other co-teacher were in my classroom that I was helping out in, and it was just the two of us so if she really wanted to talk to us all she had to do was just come into my classroom, close the door, and talk to us right there. And nobody would have known. But she purposely had this happen in the office because she wanted other people to see. Because she was stirring up drama behind the scenes. Because apparently she found out about the group chat. And so right then and there, she lays it out. And she goes, I know all about the group chat. Like, I know everything. I know everything that has been said. Everything that has been done. And I'm just sitting there and my jaw is to the freaking floor. Because I'm like, and the, my co-teacher is like, what the fuck is she talking about? What group chat? Because like I said she had no idea what was going on and I'm like my jaw's to the floor because I'm like somebody in the group chat fucking ratted us out and that's why all this weird energy is going on because somebody ratted us out and then there was rumors swirling around I'm just oblivious to everything so I had no idea that this was going on and this is why there's a divide between the girls so Allison sees us in there she clocks out she leaves remember that so she tells me she's like going forward I just don't want any more group chats like if you guys have a problem come come say it to me x y and z and I just leave that office with my coworker, and I'm like I'm gonna find out who snitched and they're gonna pay because that group chat was the only thing that was keeping me hanging on mentally at this job and somebody just fucking took it away <laughs> the next day comes around <laughs> the next day comes around and I walk in and I'm clocking in and I see Allison and Spencer in the office with the door closed. And I'm like, oh, here we fucking go. Here we fucking go. So apparently she had brought them in there and was talking to them. Because when I said click, I didn't say the girls. All I said was like, I swear like this daycare is very clicky. I don't know, blah, 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 X, Y, and Z. I didn't say like who. I didn't say I felt like, even though I felt like it was Spencer, Allison, and Paige, I didn't say that. Like I just was basically, I just feel like it's like a click, you know? So I go in there and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's probably telling them everything that we freaking said. And I'm sorry, but that's against girl code. What is wrong with you? How are you going to call me into the office and ask me all these questions and then tell somebody everything that I said? It just makes no sense at all. So the reason why I know she pulled her in there to talk to her about what was going on. Also, Allison at the time was getting reported by other teachers for having a bad attitude because at the time she did. Okay, and girl, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I love you. I have no issues with you. But th there was a certain point in time at that daycare where your attitude was horrible. <laughs> like literally horrible. Like... 
teachers would walk in like say good morning she wouldn't even say anything like if her, someone would try to talk to her she wouldn't say anything her attitude was like really bad so but it was because she was miserable there you know what i'm saying and everybody handles things different ways looking back now i get it she was unhappy there you know all this stuff was going around and i get now why she acted the way she did but during the time i'm like damn girl i didn't do anything why you got me i'm like what do you say fuck me for oh when they walked out of that office I went on to Snapchat and you know, <laughs> that's time Snapchat was a big girl. You know when someone like puts like writing over like a black screen, like a text or something like that? She puts on her Snapchat, the text was Spencer Allison Page, click. <laughs> Like she puts their names and then she puts little quotations around the word click, basically saying like, oh, you know, apparently me, Paige and Spencer are all are a click or something like that. And then I go to look at it again because I wanted to screenshot it and she deleted me off Snapchat. So that's how I knew she brought her in there to talk to her because I was like, okay. So I then see that Paige, for, no, Spencer. Paige was very much so like, I'm not getting into this drama. Y'all hash out what you gotta hash out. Paige was like not about the drama. She was very chill, calm, cool, collected. She didn't have problems with nobody. She was like, take me out of this. So Spencer goes and writes on her Snapchat story like, rumor has it I'm gonna find out who's talking shit or something like that and I'm just like oh my god here we freaking go this is about to be so much drama like what the hell is going on so I see all of that okay now during this time also Aria was fired so Aria was fired because Aria and Ad Allison had like a huge falling out basically also let me remind you like during this time when we had like basically all collectively found out that the group chat was like exposed that it was out in the open like nobody talked about it like nobody like messaged the group chat being like who told or somebody knows or so and so knows like everybody kind of just like stopped talking in it and I think it was because we were all trying to figure out who it was without letting it be known that we knew because like I knew because director number two told me but I think director number two also told all the other girls but nobody really knew we all knew so it was like who's snitching like Aria had actually ended up getting fired also it's just like caused even more of a freaking uproar that is like like I said it was basically impossible to get fired from this daycare but I think that director number two didn't really like Aria all that much and that's another story for another time but I'm probably not gonna end up talking about because it's not my story to tell but basically she ended up getting fired and it was it was just crazy so all of this drama was literally happening like all what is the fuck is this me and Emily also <laughs> started to have some friction because one day I was in the classroom and I was basically just doing my job and I needed help that day so Hannah ended up coming in and helping me and like I said Hannah was normally the chef there but on occasion she would come in a classroom so Hannah comes in the classroom and we're all talking and Hannah basically tells me that Emily's the one who told about the group chat and she knows that because director number two and her talk all the time and they're very close and that she told her that and I'm just sitting there and I'm like in disbelief because Emily is not that type of person and also if anything, Emily was talking as much shit as the rest of us, so it wouldn't make sense that she was the one told. Like, it just it didn't make any sense to me, but it did start, like, rubbing me the wrong way, and I was like, maybe she did tell. I don't know. Maybe this did happen. And like I said, there was such a divide in the group that it was basically just, like, the three of them, like, the three amigos, like, Spencer, Paige, and Allison, over there to the side, and they weren't really fucking with, like, the rest of us. Like, I don't know. It was super weird. Like... Emily was like okay with them but like by the time that Emily got there Allison left so they never really crossed ways and then Spencer same thing by the time that she left you know Emily was there so they didn't really cross ways so she didn't wasn't really like involved in what was going on but like she had knowledge of it it doesn't make any freaking sense okay so I kind of started looking at her sideways and I just was like mm, I don't know like I'm not gonna like act different towards her but I'm not gonna trust her at the same time it was so fucking stupid 
time goes on and there was one day where Emily, I was getting like annoyed at her because she was supposed to close with us. So basically the shifts here was either you were an opener or you were a closer. And if you were a closer, you had to go in and not only close your classroom, but close the classroom across from you. Um, and if you were free after that, you had to close, like I would close like three classrooms sometimes guys. And that's taking the trash out, wiping everything down and mopping the floors and vacuuming. Again, this daycare, we had a cleaning crew that would come in three times a week. So we only had to do cleaning two times a week, but then they, they fired Apple Pear fired the cleaning crew. So we were in charge of closing our buildings every night. We were open from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. at night. Parents would get there sometimes at like 6.31. So if parents are getting there and my kids are getting out at 6.31, how am I supposed to close my classroom? Because the director was also big on not staying over time because they, they couldn't afford to pay us. So how am I supposed to close down my classroom if the kids' parents are getting there at 6.30? but then not stay over 6 30 because i have to close my class what the fuck it makes no sense at all it was so disorganized so basically me and emily would kind of like tag team and like we would close like some of the classrooms but like i said there was like there was a little friction between everybody so we weren't really like speaking that much and i was getting annoyed because the classrooms that emily was doing were like so half assed and she sometimes like wasn't shutting down the classrooms or if she was it was like half fast and then I was getting in trouble because the teachers knew it was basically like me and like two other teachers that would close and it was getting reported to direction number two that the classrooms were being left half ass and it was getting blamed on me so I was getting tired so I went to direction number two and I was like I'm not the one closing down the classrooms half ass it's Emily and normally I'm not the person to rat anybody out but I was just sick of it at that point. I was sick of getting blamed for stuff that wasn't my fault. I was sick of like holding responsibility and covering for other people. So I was like, it's Emily who's not doing it. So director number two went up to Emily and told her, which I never said this, told her that basically I thought that she was lazy, that she wasn't ever cleaning the classrooms, and that she was the reason why the complaints were coming out. All I ever said was like, she's just not really cleaning them as well as she should be. I never said she was lazy, never said none of that. So then at that point, me and Emily started not liking each other. So there was one day where I was I was closing my room and nobody knew that I was there because I was supposed to leave early, okay? So I was closing my room. I had no kids in there. And normally like the doors close. I'm in there till 6.30, but I was leaving at four that day. The door was open. Nobody knew I was in there. The supply closet where you would get your, you know, mop and your mop water and your supplies was right next to my classroom. Emily went in there and she grabbed a mop. Spencer had like walked out of the classroom or something like that. And she was like, oh, I have to go ask who's closing the classroom because I don't know who's closing it. And Emily goes, oh, are people not cleaning classrooms? Did somebody not clean? Because um, people are going to complain and they need to be cleaning. Basically talking about me being like, people are going to be complaining. They need to be cleaning. But it's like, bitch, I can't clean that classroom. I'm leaving. Normally I would, but I'm not cleaning it tonight so it was just a whole entire mess so then I heard that and I was like oh bitch I was like you got the wrong one today this is where all of the lies and the secrets get exposed so there was one day where Spencer basically called me and she was like hey can we talk and I was like mm, yeah sure I guess and she's like I don't know what's going on but I feel like you know like I don't understand like why we're all mad at each other I don't get what's going on I don't get why it's like this x y and z and I'm like well you freaking tell me I was like you Paige and Allison well Paige never really acted weird towards me like I said Paige was like keep me the f out of it but I was like you and Allison have been acting so weird towards me I was like I never did anything to y'all like I don't understand and she's like well you know director number two brought us all in and she basically said that there was some girls that were in there and they were complaining saying that they felt like there was clicks and you know Allison had seen you guys in there the day before so she just assumed it was you and also she basically told us that she knew about the group chat and so I think since then we've all been a little bit just like on edge and weary because we don't know who told and she's like I don't think you told I'm just saying like you know like all of this stuff I don't know it just feels like somebody is like setting us up and like pinning us up against each other and that's basically what was happening director number two I don't know if she was bored I don't know if there was something going on and she wanted to like have some excitement in her life but she was basically trying to turn all of the girls against each other I think it was because somebody had told her about the group chat and she didn't like what was being said so she was like well I'm gonna freaking reverse psychology this bitch and I'm gonna make all of y'all hate each other so <laughs> basically um that is what happened so when they walked out of the office in their heads they thought that it was me who had gone in there and had like basically snitched on them so that's why they were acting weird towards me and then you know me and emily started getting into it and it was just like a whole entire thing and i told her i said 
Listen, I'm not gonna lie, I did go in there and I said I felt like, you know, the daycare was kind of clicky, but I was like, I never said you guys. I basically was just saying, like, it feels like it's high school all over again. And I was like, I think you you could agree because we're all grown ass women and we're all fighting over, we don't even know what the fuck we're fighting about. That's the thing is that we literally didn't even know why we didn't like each other. We all just like stopped liking each other. And I told her, I said, well, I was in the room with Hannah the other day and Hannah told me that it was Emily who snitched and told about the group chat. But I was like, I don't know if that's true because Emily doesn't seem like the type of person to do that. And she's like, yeah, I agree. But at the same time, I don't know. She was like, I don't know who freaking told. And I was like, well, I know that it obviously wasn't Allison because Allison doesn't care. Like she just doesn't care about anything. I know it wasn't Paige because Paige is unproblematic. I knew that it wasn't Spencer because me and Spencer were close for so long and I just knew that she wasn't the type of person to do that. I also knew that it wasn't Aria because Aria, like like I said, all of us e equally collectively like talked shit. So it's like, why would y'all throw us under the bus when you're doing the same thing? So then it clicked to me on the phone it clicked to me on the phone who it could possibly be, but it didn't really click until I talked to Emily. So Emily calls me like literally the next day. I don't know if Spencer and Emily had talked about like calling me maybe, or I don't know what happened, but she calls me the next day and she's like, can we talk? She's like, I don't know what's going on between us. Like we've been like really big bitches towards each other, but like we're supposed to be friends and like, I don't know what's going on, but like we need to talk about this and we need to hash this out. And I was kind of pissed at um, Emily, I'm not gonna lie, because that day I had basically passed my kids over to her because I had to go home. So I had like two kids left and I needed to close my classroom. So I had two kids, I went and I passed them to Emily and I remember she was outside. So I go outside and I drop them off. And I pulled an Allison and I dropped them off and I didn't say shit to her. And the reason I didn't say shit to her is because remember, she was talking crap about me when she was in the supply closet being like, oh, did she not clean your classroom? Because if people are gonna complain, they need to start cleaning. So I was pissed at her, I was like, no, F you. So I did that. Emily went to the director, okay, the director, director number two, and told her that I passed the kids without saying anything to her, that I had a bad attitude and X, Y, and Z. So it already clicked in my head who it was because if it's not me, if it's not Spencer, if it's not Allison, if it's not Emily, and it's not Aria, Aria's not even there anymore, who's left? Hannah. And guess who, when we would talk, you know, crap about director number two, guess who wouldn't chime in? Hannah. So I already had it in my head. But then, that day when I dropped off my kids to Emily, I was in my classroom. The director comes in and she shuts the door and she sits down. And she sits down crisscross applesauce and she's like, are you okay? I just feel like, you know, like your energy when you come to work, it doesn't feel like you're happy. It doesn't feel like, you know, you want to be here. And you know, some other teachers have been complaining. And I'm like, who? And I was like, let's just cut to the chase, cut all the BS, cut all the corners. Like you're cutting a fucking grilled cheese. Who? And she's like, okay, it was Emily. Emily said you dropped off the kids. And you didn't say anything to her. And I was like, well, yeah, because I'm mad at her. I was like, because, you know, we've had friction and I don't know what's going on, but I think that she's the one that spilled the beans about the group chat and it's making me feel some type of way. And then the director looks at me and she goes, oh, Emily wasn't the one who told me about the group chat. It was Hannah. You guys, she literally fucking told me as if she was telling me like, oh, I'm just gonna go to Target and buy a pair of sunglasses. Like, she literally was like, oh, it wasn't Emily, it was Hannah. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you I was, you guys, I was so mad. I was so mad for so many reasons. For so many reasons, because listen to this, okay? Like I said, Emily ends up calling me and she's like talking to me, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, why did you tell on me to direct number two? I was like, why did you snitch on me? And she's like, because you snitched on me and said that I, and you told her that I was being lazy and that I wasn't cleaning the classrooms. So when you dropped off your kids to me, I was, uh, I snitched on you and I told her. And I'm like, I never said that you were lazy and didn't clean the classrooms. I went in there and basically told her that the reason why the classrooms weren't cleaned wasn't because of me, because I was getting blamed. I was like, I never called you lazy and said that. And she goes, well, I don't know. Director number two came up to me and told me all these things that you were saying about me. And when she told me that you were saying these things about me, she goes, I told her 
maybe I should call Dakota and talk to her about things because we're supposed to be friends. Like I've been to every one of Dakota's birthdays. I've been to her baby shower. Like we're cool. Like we talk on the phone after work and stuff. She was like, maybe I should call her. And apparently director number two told her, no, don't call Dakota. I don't think she wants to talk to you right now that you should just leave her alone. In fact, you guys should all leave each other alone. Let things cool off. Let things simmer down. So not only is director number two telling Allison Page and Spencer that you know, oh, you know, there's girls that are saying you guys are a click and you guys need to start, you know, like not being so clicky and being so high schoolish. Not only is she doing that, but she's also telling my friend Emily that I'm saying all these things about her. And, and then when Emily's like, oh, I think I should call her. She's like, no, 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 don't call her. Don't talk to her. Not only is she doing that, but then she also fired Aria. <laughs> and Apparently, Hannah's going in there and just feeding her information every single day about all of us because, like I said, keep in mind, Hannah wanted a classroom. Hannah was tired of being a chef and she was tired of being in the kitchen. She had just graduated from college, had a degree, and wanted her own classroom. So in Hannah's mind, she thought, if I spill the beans and tell director number two about all of this, I'm going to get brownie points and I'm going to get what I want. And it backfired on her so much because that never, ever ended up even happening. Basically, me and Emily are talking on the phone. And I'm like, girl, I never said that. And she's like, well, I never said that. And then she tells me, yeah, I wanted to call you. And she told me not to. And I said, why do I get the freaking feeling that she's turning all of us against each other? And she goes, no, I think that 100%. I think that's exactly what's happening. I think she found out about the group chat and that she was pissed about it and in turn, and wanted to get us to all turn on one another and I said well you know who I, I said you know who snitched on the group chat right she goes who I said it was Hannah and she goes how do you know that I said because director number two sat in my room today and literally fucking told me it was Hannah